Welcome back to Ontario Soccer's Made in Ontario podcast. I'm your host, Rebecca Schoenard. We have another great episode in store for you today, marking the end of Canada's run in the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. The squad had some highlight performances, including up-and-comer Olivia Smith making her World Cup debut during the match versus Australia. Olivia was the youngest player on Canada's roster for the tournament, and just a few years ago, she was actually the youngest player to ever debut for Canada Soccer's women's national team at 15 years and 94 days old. Up until recently, Olivia was playing collegiately at Penn State University, but has decided to forego the remainder of her NCAA eligibility in order to pursue a professional contract. Last week, we sat down with Sean Smith, Olivia's father, and talked all about her future, her upbringing, and her beginnings in soccer. But before we hear from Sean, we are going to hear from Marco Milanovic, Olivia's former coach from the North Toronto Nitros. I'm very excited to welcome Coach Marco Milanovic to the Made in Ontario podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Doing great. Happy to be here. Great. So we recently interviewed the father of Olivia Smith, which our listeners can hear after our time today with you. Um, But Olivia's father, Sean, said, and I quote, that you are hands down one of the best coaches that he's ever come across. So I want to talk a little bit about your coaching career. When did you decide that you wanted to become a soccer coach? I mean, I think like most players, when you when you see that you're not going to be able to play um, professionally, you're not going to be able to make a career out of out of playing. Uh, you start thinking about staying in the game in some capacity, and coaching was the next next best thing. Um, and uh, I started fairly young. I took I took a team. In 2009, when I was only 24, 25, and uh, yeah, never looked back. I was... Currently a men's coach, but we know that not too long ago you coached Olivia Smith. So can you tell us how old was Olivia um, when you coached her? And if you remember your first impression of her, can you tell us a little bit about that? I think Liv was 12 or 13 when she came to the club. And she was playing with my 2002 girls, which were two years older than her. Um, first time I saw her, she was actually playing for someone else. I think she was playing for Markham at the time. And they were playing against star girls, our younger girls, our 2003 girls. And I was just finishing up my game and I was leaving the field. And usually I, I stick around and watch watch a little bit of the next game as well. And, uh, and yeah, I just saw this girl do some of the things that really were not you couldn't really see in that age group. Uh, and, 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 and I stuck around and I started asking questions who she was. And funny enough, next, next year she came to our tryouts and it all went from there. So how long did you coach Olivia for? I think I never stopped really, because even when she went to, uh, to the Rex program and, and later on, she would always, you know, come by our sessions when she's, when she's available and train with my different groups and boys and, all the girls and and you know she just she just wants to play and you know players like that I, I never I never turn away and there's always a spot for her anytime she calls me and and uh, we find a session for her she comes out and nothing really changes so she's been even before this World Cup she she trained with with our boys a little bit and she tends to overtrain sometimes too so I have to stop her but yeah she she loves it and I love players like that too. What have been some of your best memories over the years um, from coaching Olivia? I mean, there's so many. There's so many. When it comes to the soccer field, she in the first season, she scored 30 goals in 15 or 16 games. And she was playing two years up. She scored five in one game. Um, and I think it was a left foot a shot, right foot a shot, header, volley, free kick, something like that. So on field, there were just so many so many off the field also a lot because she just she just loved to play i really enjoyed how much how excited she was before games so she would she would dance before the warm-ups and listen to music and that kind of stuff which was just she just loved loved playing and then there was there was another one we went to a castle tournament in north carolina with uh i think it was u15 or u16 at the time so olivia would have been two years younger 
And we had a we had a little bit of free time, so I asked the girls what they wanted to do. So there was options to go to the mall, do some shopping, to go back to the hotel and relax, or there was an arcade near nearby with some video games and stuff like that. So everyone other than Olivia picked picked the first two, which was shopping and and resting, and Olivia picked the arcade option, which again just showed how young she was, even though how uh, how good she was on the field. So I I also picked the arcade by the way. So it was it was me and Liv. That's a solid choice. I think I would do the same. Um you so you talked a little bit about some of Olivia's amazing skills and talents that she brings to the field. If you could tell us specifically what technical abilities does she bring to the game that sets her apart from other players? I mean, any coach, any coach would have told you that she was just she was just well above above her age group. And even, like I said, even playing two years up, she was just exceptional. So it's a mix of different things. Athletically, she was always amazing um, when it came to her power, speed, balance, uh, just physical literacy as a whole. She was always exceptional. So that was one. Technically, she was very, very uh, proficient and and. Her ability to strike the ball is just was just scary for, for for people that haven't seen her before and and first time seeing her shoot was always was always interesting to watch. So so it was a combination of things, and then you add to that her drive to win and her love to play. Uh, it's a really nice combination. You happen to watch her debut in the Women's World Cup? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, it was exciting. It's too bad they're out, but. Um, it's part of the game, and I'm sure she's going to have many more. Yeah, for sure. It seems like Olivia is, you know, an amazing part of the next generation of Canada Soccer's women's national team. So it's really exciting to see all of these amazing opportunities on the horizon for her. And, you know, we have the Olympic qualifiers coming up pretty soon. So on to the next one, right? Of course. Thank you, Marco, for being with us today. I really appreciate your time. And yeah, we'll continue supporting your club, your teams, and um, we'll keep an eye out for what's going on in Olivia's life here. My pleasure. Once again, that was Marco Milanovic from the North Toronto Nitros. Coming up next, we hear from Sean Smith. He met with us last week from Perth, Australia, where he, his wife, and youngest daughter were staying to support Olivia and her teammates in the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. Sean Smith, thank you so much for connecting with us today, all the way from the other side of the globe. Tell me, how has your experience been so far at the FIFA Women's World Cup? Oh, so far, it's been a dream come true for me, seeing all this. And I know my wife and my other daughter here, Malia. Um, it's it's been it, it's been a dream so far. Um, just being to interact with all the other parents and and then seeing the excitement that everybody here in Australia has for this game it, it's it, it's amazing to see yeah it sounds amazing and from what we see on tv it looks amazing and i want to say congratulations by the way uh, to you and your family for getting a chance to be out there for all of olivia's success can you tell us a little bit about what the last few years have been like for olivia and the smith family uh the last few years have been it's it's been pretty it's been tough um you know with covid um it, it was that that's where it really was was tough for her um but the last couple of years now with university um coming back home training back at home and still being a part of Ontario with League One you know it was it it, it really helped her a lot grow um in the game for sure yeah, I'm sure these last few years have been a whirlwind. They have been for so many of us, but with so much going on in Olivia's life, I can't even imagine. Um, but we wanted to have you on today to talk about the beginning of Olivia's career. So if you wouldn't mind, can you tell us a little bit about growing up for Olivia? We know that she was raised in Whitby um, in the GTA, and obviously the soccer is a huge part of her life. But what else can you tell us? What was Olivia like as a kid? Um, Olivia was, was very, was very driven. Um, she always, always wanted more. Um, 
she had a want and a hunger for the game that um you know at a young age you you kind of just see that it's a little bit different so uh, it all started basically with uh, you know we did like you said started in Whitby um we did house league out there and you know I coached you through house league um you know and then we just needed more the the team practices just wasn't enough so we would go out probably you know every day um do a lot of technical drills together um a lot of running a lot of hills a lot of ladder speed ladders um that was just us and then on top of that you know we we would actually we'd, we'd also go and try to find um other places where people were teaching different things, striking, um, different types of technical ability that we would travel. You know, we'd go to Mississauga, we'd go to Brampton, um, you know, six o'clock a, in, the, in the morning, a.m. She's waking up, you know, as a, as a seven, eight-year-old and traveling just to train in the mornings when, you know, a lot of times she would miss out on birthdays and and you know, hanging out with sleepovers with her friends and stuff like that. Like we just didn't, we didn't do it. It was there was a focus that she had at such a young age that, you know, I, I don't know if anybody else had that type of discipline. Yeah. So do you see that focus and determination and discipline? Does she still carry all of those same qualities with her? And if so, how have those qualities developed over time or how have they maybe changed over time? um the the hunger and the and the want to learn it is still there that that's the thing is that she's we we ended up um you know olivia played in whitby she played in oshawa she played in ajax she played in markham she went to north toronto and then that's when she got pulled into the national system but the reason why those moves were made for her was because she was always looking for more. Um, and that's what I see to this day. To this day, um, she she wanted, she, she needs, she needs to have something to strive for all the time. She she needs um that that push. And she she has something that, you know what, um, it's it's been a pleasure to watch and a pleasure to help her in this is to always try to find her something else that adds to her game whether it be training with boys um whether it be you know playing with with different styles of coaching um that's what really drives her yeah for sure so you mentioned a little bit about all the different clubs that olivia kind of had a stint with in her youth days would you be able to pick out maybe a couple of those or a couple coaches that she worked with over her time in the Ontario soccer system and if there was any club or any coach that had a special impact or was especially influence influential on Olivia's career who would you say that would be um I would have to say um a turning point there there's always a, the turning points in 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 players careers that you kind of see when things kind of changed for them um i think when she went to to ajax she had a coach named uh, michelle white that uh, really pushed her um with the the physical and the fitness part of it um she was always very technical um she, she we knew everyone knew olivia already for her her striking ability and power with her left and right. But it was the the fitness component where Michelle White at um at, in, in Ajax and, and the and the players on that Ajax team that really changed Olivia. Um that, for, that's my opinion from what I've seen. Um and then I think um another another big part in a in a coach that is very near and dear even to this day um was North Toronto and um his name is Marco Milanovic which hands down is one of the best coaches that I've that I've ever been around um and of course once she left uh Joey Lombardi from the uh from NDC 
is another person that is very near and dear and has helped instrumentally in her development. But um, though, though for me, I think when it comes to coaches um, in the Ontario system, those three are the ones that stand out to me. Okay, that's great to know. You know, we like to always give recognition to the coaches and the clubs in our system that, you know, help create these amazing talents. Um, so but I do, but I, but, but, yeah. but I would like to say that those are the coaches that stood out to me. Sure, yeah. Now, there might, are, there, there's a lot of coaches yeah. from, from each one of those clubs that she's learned from. And, you know, I, I know I don't want to, you know, disrespect anybody at all. A hundred percent. But there, there's been a lot of coaches throughout her, her career that have really helped out. Um, but for the question, those were. Yeah, the ones. no, of course. Yeah, of course. Every coach has something to offer. I feel like every athlete takes something from everybody that they work with. But some yeah. have a, a deeper impact, I guess you could say, than others, yeah. just for a variety of reasons. But yeah, thank you. You know, calling out three people who had an impact on Olivia's career, I think that's great. And it, it's clear that there's a lot of people who have had, I guess, a hand yes. in her journey. So, yeah. yeah, I wanted to ask a little bit more. You talked about the turning points in a player's career um, when you can kind of see that maybe they're taking things in a different direction. To you, what would you say was the moment or I guess the time that you knew that your daughter was going to be something really special in the world of soccer? Um, I think just watching when we would, when we would go out to the field and just doing the same stuff and training over and over, you know, um, you could see that she wanted, she wanted a lot more than what I could offer and what anybody else, you know, in our, in our little circle could offer. So when I saw when I saw those those things and the hunger and the want in her, um, and then just seeing you know the 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 what we call the killer instinct that she had at such a young age that you know that's all she wanted to do was put the ball in the back of the net like that's and then it started with just her scoring goals, but then I'd say by the age of probably I'd say nine you started to see that she understood the game you know a lot more than others where you know we'd sit and watch games we'd um I I would videotape every single one of her games and after the games we would go back and we'd dissect each game and she understood you know the things that you know she could have done better or things that she she was pointing at pointing it out to me I should have made this run you know, I could have ran off this player's back shoulder. You know, I could have, I, I could have slid this through ball between the center back and the, and the full back. Like she's telling me these things at, um, you know, like I said, nine, 10 years old, she, she understood. So it was a, probably about those times where I knew that she was a little bit different and she, this was, she was born to play this game. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, Olivia spent a season playing for Penn State, but she left the school to pursue a professional career. Um, I know that a lot of the details of that situation are still under wraps, so I know there's probably some stuff that you can't tell us at this point, but what can you say about this decision Olivia has recently made and what it's going to mean for her in the long term? Well, yeah, it's they've, they've announced it that she she is going to be playing for Sporting Lisbon um, in Portugal. So she is foregoing her her um, her last two years at Penn State. But um, she still will be getting her Penn State degree. Um, that was an agreement that we made as long as that she, you know, played one season at Penn State that they would honor her scholarship. So that was very important for me. Um, but again, um, back to the first one of the questions you asked me was, you know, that's Olivia. She wants more. And um, she believed that the you're playing in Europe and, and, and playing in one of those environments where, you know, that's all she has to focus on is waking up, 
training, eating, training, and then training some more, that that's the environment that she believed um, she needed right now was just to develop more and she needed more. And she believes that going to um, the European league right now is going to, or uh, playing in a team in Europe for a team in Europe right now is probably the best bet for her. Yeah. I'm, it sounds like it was the right choice for Olivia and the Ontario soccer community is so excited to see what's coming up next for her. We can't wait to see what she does next. She's been so incredible. Um, and thank you again, Sean, for being here on the show and letting us in on the world of your daughter, Olivia Smith. Enjoy the rest of your time with your family there at the World Cup. Best of luck from us to Canada, and we will be watching from home. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And you know what? You know, our family thanks you too. Um, Ontario soccer has been our home, <laughs> you know. So anything that you guys need from us we're always there for you thank you we really appreciate that all right thank you as well to all of those who tuned in follow us on social or subscribe to our newsletter inside the 18 for all the latest info from ontario soccer the details can be found at ontariosoccer.net lastly we would like to thank our premier partners toronto fc dairy farmers of ontario the canadian premier league and bmo bank of montreal Thank you for supporting our mission of building the Ontario soccer community.